Tips about getting your first programming job. Your first programming job requires extra effort, but if you follow my advice, you should have no problem getting one. Luckily, once you have some experience, when it comes time to look for your next job, recruiters will be reaching out to you. Software engineers are expected to specialize in a domain. Examples of programming domains are web development, app development, game development, and data science. While it is okay to experiment with different domains while you are learning, at some point you will want to pick one and become an expert in it because each area requires its own skills. For example, web developers are expected to be familiar with web frameworks and data scientists with data pipelines. To start familiarizing yourself with the different domains and the skills you need to work in them, visit the Python job board and take a look at the technical requirements for each job. One of the challenges new programmers face is getting a job without experience. The best way to overcome this is by building projects. You should think of your GitHub as your resume and put as many projects on it as possible. Try to focus on building projects that will interest other programmers so that your future interviewer will be interested in it. For example, when I was first interviewing for jobs, I talked about a program I wrote that scraped and analyzed data from Airbnb. My interviewers loved the project and kept asking questions about how it worked, which helped me move forward in the interview process. Once you have an impressive list of projects, before you start applying for jobs, I recommend doing freelance work to continue building your resume. Upwork.com is an excellent website for finding freelance programming work. You can find projects with budgets anywhere from less than $100 to over $10,000, which allows you to start working on small projects and build your way up to bigger ones. Taking on freelance projects is a way to work as a professional developer without having to go through the rigorous technical interviews required to land a full-time job. When you are ready to start looking for your first job, I recommend using LinkedIn to get interviews. LinkedIn is filled with technical sourcers whose job is to find people that know how to program, like you, and schedule them for interviews. Programming talent is scarce, and if you can show you have it, they will schedule you to talk to a recruiter even if you have no professional programming experience other than personal projects and freelance work. Technical sourcers find candidates by searching profiles on LinkedIn for keywords, so you should optimize your profile to make it easier for them to find you. Now that you know Python, make sure to include the word Python a few times in your profile. Do the same thing for your other programming skills as well. Also, make sure to ask people to endorse you for your technical skills in your LinkedIn profile. Finally, because you've been doing freelance work, you should list your most recent job as Software Engineer and write a summary of the different projects you've worked on. The hiring process at most companies follows the same pattern. First, a technical sourcer schedules you for a call with a recruiter. The recruiter might ask you a few technical questions but the call is mostly to assess if you are a good cultural fit for the role. If that interview goes well, the recruiter will either schedule you for another call with an engineer on the team you are interviewing for, or ask you to come in for an in-person interview. During the on-site interview, you will most likely have to pass a technical test. Technical interviews are notoriously difficult. However, with the right amount of preparation, you will have no problem passing yours. The vast majority of technical interviews focus exclusively on two subjects, data structures and algorithms. This is good news because you know what you must do to pass your interview. Get very good at these two areas of computer science. Fortunately, this will also help you become a better programmer. The best resource I've found to prepare for a technical interview is LeetCode, a website filled with the types of problems you will encounter in one. A common mistake is to start interviewing before you've spent any time preparing for your technical test. If you are interviewing for a regular company, you should give yourself about two months to prepare. If you can solve all of the problems marked easy on LeetCode, you should be in an excellent position to pass your interview.
If you are interviewing at one of the top technical companies, like Facebook or Google, that is another story. You need to be able to solve every problem on LeetCode, and you should give yourself three to six months to prepare for your interview. Once you feel confident solving the types of problems you will be asked in technical interviews, I recommend taking one final step to prepare. Start practicing on a competitive programming site. The reason technical interviews are so hard is not just because of the questions, it is also because you are out of your element. Most programmers are not used to solving problems under artificial time constraints with someone talking to them. The best way to prepare yourself to do well in this strange environment is to start doing head-to-head -head coding challenges on a website like CodeFights. In head-to-head -head challenges, you compete against another programmer to see who can solve technical interview type questions faster. Programming competitively prepares you to solve problems under pressure and will help you ace your technical interviews. Plus, it is also a lot of fun. Once you've spent enough time solving problems and you feel comfortable coding in a high pressure environment, you are ready to start interviewing. With the amount of preparation you put in, you will sail through the interview process and land your first programming job. There is nothing more exciting and intimidating than starting your first programming job. In this video, I will go over what to expect and a few ways to prepare. Software engineer positions ordinarily go like this. Software engineer 1, 2, 3, etc. Your first position will most likely be a Software Engineer 1, which is also called a Junior Software Engineer. While most Senior Engineers are expected to own projects, Junior Software Engineers are not. They are merely supposed to make contributions, like fixing bugs and building new features. As a Junior Software Engineer, you are getting paid to learn, so make sure to take advantage of the situation and soak up as much knowledge as you can. When I got my first programming job, one of the biggest things I struggled with was using version control. I had been using version control in my projects, but they only had one contributor, me. When you use version control with other people, you get used to resolving problems like merge conflicts, which happen when two people try to change the same line of code. If you don't have much experience using version control with other people, before you start your new job, I recommend working on a project with multiple contributors. You can achieve this by starting a project with a friend or contributing to an open source project. Of course, Git will not be the only tool your programming team uses. Chances are, they will use several you are not familiar with. Before your first day of work, I recommend researching all of the tools your team uses and building a project with them. Starting your new job already familiar with your team's tools will prevent you from getting overwhelmed trying to learn several new tools all at once. Many companies encourage pair programming. Pair programming means programming with another coder. One programmer drives, which means they control the computer, and the other observes. The person observing gets to learn from the driver by watching them work. When you are first starting out, you should ask your manager if you can do a few pair programming sessions to help familiarize yourself with how your team does things. You should also find out what software development methodology your team uses. A software development methodology is a process for creating software. Agile and the waterfall method are two examples. The Agile methodology has unique features like stand-up meetings, meetings where everyone stands the entire time to keep them short. After you find out what your method team uses, you should read up on it. Familiarizing yourself with your team's methodology ahead of time will help make starting your new job less stressful. The last piece of advice I will leave you with is to outwork everyone else. Your team will be made up of talented programmers and most of them will have computer science degrees. That means, at the very least, they've been programming for four years, and probably much longer. The first programming team I joined was made up of talented programmers with computer science degrees from schools like Stanford and Caltech, and it was intimidating working with them. However, 
I was able to overcome my lack of experience with hard work and enthusiasm. I would always be the last person to leave the office, and I was continually building side projects outside of work, which helped me understand the tools we were using and how to improve my programming skills. Working on a new programming team is intimidating, but if you do the preparation I outlined in this lesson and work as hard as you can, you will quickly become a productive member of your new team.